with the advancement of science and technology, human beings know more about the world around us. We are thinking about how a seed germinates, why the climate changes, and what makes up the universe we live in. While solving these questions, we keep on bumping into other problems, and this cycle of finding solutions eventually help us to develop our knowledge in all subjects. Psychologists have always been trying to explain the reasons for certain behaviours. And in today's episode, we're going to look at doodling. Doodling is defined as aimlessly sketching patterns and figures unrelated to the primary task. But is doodling aimless? It might impair performance by moving concentration from the primary task. Or it might improve performance and be an aid to concentration. The study by Professor Andrade aimed to find out. Professor Andrade proposed that doodling might aid concentration, for example by reducing daydreaming so that you stay focused. This idea is based on the working memory model, which suggests that two types of different working memory can be used at the same time. Our film crew was lucky enough to be invited by Professor Andrade at the local medical research centre. She would talk to us about her experiment. Um, so, um, as we're conducting the experiment here, um, it is a uh, laboratory experiment. And since there was a cognitive research just around um, at the Medical Research Council, um, with 40 various members aged from um, 18 to 55, um, we're taking them as our participants as well. The, uh, this could be described as um, opportunity sampling. And um, we, di we divided up the participants into two groups, um, a control group and an experimental group. Um, there are 20 participants in each. Um, they're mainly females, but there are, uh, one, uh, there are two males for control group and three males for the experimental group. Um, as the participants um, are mainly performing um, in only one level of IV, we can um, classify this as um, um, independent measures design. Participants were recruited just after finishing an unrelated experiment and asked if they would mind spending another five minutes helping with research. The intention was to enhance the boredom of the task by testing people who were already thinking about going home. Participants were tested individually in a quiet and visually dull room. Uh, we let them wait for a long time on purpose to enhance their level of boredom so that doodling would make more impact in their, uh, on our experimental group. Um, now I will give him some instructions to ask him to sign an informed consent. Uh, I'm going to play you a tape. I want you to pretend that the speaker is a friend who has telephoned you to invite you to a party. The tape is rather dull, but that's okay because I don't want you to rem remember any of it. Just write down the names of people who will definitely or probably be coming to the party, excluding yourself. Um, ignore the names of those um, who can't come. Um, do not write anything else. A mock telephone message was recorded onto audio cassette tape in a fairly monotone voice at an average speaking rate of 227 words per minute and played at a comfortable listening volume. The script included eight names of people attending a party and names of three people and one cat who could not attend. Eight place names were mentioned, along with much irrelevant material. Participants in the doodling condition used a pencil to shade shapes of approximately 1 cm diameter printed on a piece of A4 paper, with 10 shapes per row and alternating rows of squares and circles. A 4.5 cm wide margin on the left hand side allowed space for writing the target information. Control participants wrote the target information on a lined piece of paper. Participants listened to the tape, which lasted 2.5 minutes, and wrote down the names as instructed. When the tape finished, the experimenter collected the response sheets and engaged participants in a conversation for one minute, 
including an apology for misleading them about the memory test. Uh, half the participants were then asked to recall、um, the names of party goers, and when they had done that, of the places mentioned,、um, the other half、uh, recalled the places first,、um, followed by the names. This is called ba- counterbalancing. Counterbalancing is often used as a control procedure against order effects. Professor Andres used counterbalancing to control for potential order effects caused by the two different measures of recall. Professor Andres then started the long process of data analysis. After a few months, we were invited back, and here is Professor Andres talking to us about her findings. Overall, participants in the doodling condition recalled a mean of 7.5 pieces of information, 29 percent more than the mean of 5.8 recalled by the control group. Memory scores were entered into a two doodling control, two names places mixed measures. ANOVA, which confirmed that the、uh, monitored names were recalled better than the incidental places, recall was better for doodlers than controls. It is fairly obvious that doodling helps concentration. On a primary task, because the doodling participants performed better than participants just listening to the primary task with not not concurrent task. However, since the doodling group were better on both the monitored and incidental information, there are two possible explanations. Either the doodlers notice more of the target words, which is an effect on attention, or doodling improved memory directly. For example, by encouraging deeper information processing. At this point, our smart audience might have already realized that the study has a lot of flaws. In fact, in a recent TV interview, a psychology student from a mysterious Oriental high school confronted Professor Andres about her study. Well, your research is quite good indeed, but actually, I find out that there might be some weakness of the study. How do you dare to say that? Well, let's take the sampling method as an example. You use opportunity sampling and recruited forty participants from a medical research center, right? These participants are aged eighteen to fifty-five, and most of them are female. And this indicates that your researcher cells may be age bias and gender bias. Also. Opportunity sampling results in low generalizability of the research, as people who present at the medical research center for such study might be very similar, and thus cannot represent the whole whole population. Ah,、uh, okay, that's a good point. But still, I believe that my study has high reliability and validity, since I used laboratory experiment and independent measure design. Um, this means that I am able to control the extraneous variables. For example, I ensured that the participants were listening to a volume、um, comfortable for them, and I used a recorded telephone message so that there were no differences in stress on the、um, important words between the conditions.、Um, it was also standardized so that the Participants were all equally likely to be bored and therefore to daydream. This was achieved by the monotony of the recording, using a dull, quiet room, and asking them to do the experiment when they were、um, expecting to go home.、Um, the independent variable of doodling is also operationalized using the doodling sheets. Um, therefore, the research is valid, as I can be confident that、um, the differences in results between conditions were due to doodling or not. A cause of due to the amazing internet connection at the school of the psychology students, the interview was cut off. To sum up, other strengths include objective data obtained from quantitative data. Other weaknesses include participants were unable to give fully informed consent, low ecological validity. And participant variables might have an effect. Despite the weaknesses, the study was still considered to be a great success. In the future, if your teacher ever caught you doodling again, just share this study with him or her. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed it.